And you're literally using the wire as your eyes. I feel something. Yeah. You just let bite? Him, I let him eat on it. Huh? I let him eat on it. Yeah. See if you sometimes feel that little tug. And then you gently pull on it a little bit, see if it tugs back. He's in there. Okay. He's not on it, but he wants it? Yeah. Okay. He's biting it. As well, you getting a bite? I'm getting bites, yeah. Oh, good bite. Okay, okay, okay. Then bring it up over this way. Over this way. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, it just came off. It's okay. Oh. So when you have that bite, sometimes yeah. you have to do it kind of quick. Oh, okay. So when you're pulling it in, hold on. So when you're pulling it in, yeah. always keep that 90 degree angle, get it like this, and then bring him in. Oh, okay. So, like Should if I, I adjust my bait? Yeah. A little Put bit. Put it on there a little bit more. So when you have it, and so you have a fish in, yeah. put your hand down here and bring so him up like this and right get up. him over a dry spot okay. or somewhere you can work him because sometimes he'll fall off right when you get him on the, on the bank. You guys are in for a treat because we have a total experienced master poke puller right here by the name of Monica Ripperogel. Mom and dad taught me everything I know. Yeah, she's like generational poke polling experience, which is very, very rare. And we have a complete beginner. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you exactly how they're doing it, what they're using, and we're gonna mic them both up so that you can hear what's going on. And Monica's gonna give you some really, really great instruction through Veronica. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna do a little bit of fishing until then, but what do you we're think? Gonna, we're gonna try. I don't guarantee any fish. I guarantee the spot and you do the rest. We'll see what happens. Good luck. Woo -woo. Right. By the way, we have some amazing people here with us who you guys should subscribe to. We got Mimi Fish Fish and family. What's up? Hello. Ooh. <laughs> oh, Another one, Mimi. We got Ranch with the hooks, as well. the cook family. And then I got them unsnagged, and as I'm pulling them in, I'm like, oh, cool, it looks like a, what the heck, there's something behind it, too. Look at that. And there's Amy. Yes. Hopefully they get on some good fish, so the link to their episode will be below, to their channel as well. Definitely subscribe. Mimi's got some great adventures ahead of her. Speaking of great adventures, B, the Flossy Fisherman, made it today. What's going on, yo? Yeah. What you got there? Cabazon on the hand line, man. We're hooking him up. Exactly. We're gonna make sure that uh, he gets on some good fish, so definitely watch his video too. It's gonna be linked below. Subscribe as always. And then, of course, we got Papa Leroy here. He's spearheading this trip after 26 hours of work in 48 hours. He's tired. Pretty much. But I'm here. I we can't are, pass that fishing and being with good friends. We appreciate it. That's it, buddy. Let's get out here and catch some fish, man. Rod and reel right now, but when the tide gets low, poke pole in and pocket fishing. Shoo! Dang, this is what a seal fly looks like after you smash it. Look at, you, look at your bucket. Oh my gosh, look at all these seal flies. That's ridiculous. Ugh. All right, so here's what we got going on here. Just got ourselves a, a little three ounce, two or three ounce ball weight swivel snap. I'm going three-way swivel, but you really don't need it. It's usually a high-low rig with two hooks. 30-pound line is what I'm rolling with today. See if we can't catch something as the tide's going out. There it is. That's the rig. As Leroy mentioned earlier, we started to fish the outgoing tide as we were waiting for that peak low tide so we could start poke pulling. This place is spectacular and it allowed us to really okay. spread out and do our own fishing. We each did really well, as you saw earlier. It took forever, but I got one. Yeah, short. Short cabbie. I got it right here. Oh, you got it? A little cab is on? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I just let it sit for the longest time. These things are notorious for just eating it and then sitting down. Wayne and I were just having like a 20 minute conversation. God knows how long this guy was on there. <laughs> I just thought I was snagged. Little cabbie. Beautiful fish. Farewell.
So Wayne was like, oh, do I have a fish? And this is just a trip because I've never seen a monkey-faced eel come out of its hole to try to get something. And it had to in order to get Wayne's high-low rig. <laughs> That's crazy. Monkey-faced eel on a high-low rig. I'm surprised. I thought it was snagged. Oh, nice. <laughs> Lucky. Yes. That wave helped me. What is this? What is this? What is this? <laughs> it's a rockfish. What the heck? Look at that rockfish. It's beautiful. <laughs> And now, the moment you've all been poke waiting for, a, a Monica fit. teaches Veronica right. how to poke pole and catch her very first poke pole fish. We're looking for ledges. You can go vertical, but most of these are horizontal ledges. It's just part of the strata, the rock strata. And as the tide pulls out, grassies, cabazon, lingcod, everything will hide under those ledges. And that's kind of what you're looking for. You can rod and reel fish it, but when the poke poling starts, and the ledges exposed, it can be heaps of fun. So what we're looking for is just little pockets and ledges. Um, the, the, as the tide recedes, the grassies, the eels, uh, cra everything hides under the ledges. It's a good ab ambush point for the fish when the tide comes back in. It offers some protection from the waves, and that's what we're looking for. All you need, mussel, squid, um, or sardines, anchovies. Anything will work, but there's a lot of bait stealers out here. Um, a lot of times I use like a three-aught hook, so I don't catch as many of the small eels, which is a lot, because I want to be gentle on the population, or yeah. we do, because you can catch a lot of them. But you can catch them on five-aughts. These eel, these grassies, will take just about any size hook. My favorite bait is mussel, but squid will work all day long and it stays on the hook better. So we're going to try that first. And this is kind of neat because I got to take you out here for your first eel. And hopefully we're going to put you on your first eel. Yes. So Miss Veronica is due for a squirmy wormy that tastes great in adobo. Po -po. Yes, adobo eel yeah. is amazing. Okay. And if you look back where she's poke poling, it yeah. doesn't look like much. But these ledges start out a lot of times like this and then they'll expand out. Some of them they'll get a little bit narrower. Uh-huh. And like with Edward, you can catch one fish after another in, in the ledges. And okay. you're gonna use the wire to kind of feel your, you don't go in real fast, go in kind of slow. Cause uh -huh. you can literally startle some of the fish right out of the ledge and they'll go shooting out. Here's Edward, super duper double wrapped. X-Men assemble. Is that too big? Might be, but let's try it. Cause there might be some grassies in there. Might have to let them chew on it a little bit, but. Okay, hold this one. Okay. Switch. Take a look at this. It's very important. You see how the hook and bait is attached to fishing line, attached to the arm of the poke pole? That has to be because if the hook was attached directly to the arm, that would be considered a gaff, which is illegal. So if you're going to make a poke pole, definitely make sure you have fishing line between the hook and the arm. And this one is Charlotte. Yeah. Her name is Charlotte. Is this Charlotte? No, this is Charlotte. Oh, that's Charlotte? Yeah. I never named mine. I'm sorry. You've been my friend for over 30 years and I never named you. It's the poke pole with no name. Now, you're not afraid of the waves coming over? Uh, not too much. If a I big one mind. comes over, you just kind of use your poke pole to brace you. Yeah. And always look behind you for an escape route. But always remember, if it's a really big wave, it'll roll you back in towards shore first before it sucks you back out. Uh, is this, oh, this looks like a nice rock. Yeah, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna go down and you're gonna try and get low. You don't have to go all the way to the bottom, but uh -huh. start feeling where the ledge is. And you may hit rock first and see if you can find a ledge and then let it just sit there for a minute. See if anybody's there. Okay. You feeling anything? Any hits or bumps? No. Sometimes you can move it around. You can go a little bit higher, a little bit lower, 
or you can go oh, to the bites. right or to the left. I felt some bites. Okay, see that push? Yeah. Now see if you, is it, okay, oh. now gently pull it out. Okay, come up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Over this way, over this way. Good job! <laughs> <laughs> Good job. First poke, Paul. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> First dip of the day. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh. All right. The knee pad saved your knee. Oh, yeah. High five. Sweet. I think this is going to be a good day. What do you think? I think so. <laughs> what do, where is our tools? Oh, no. I'm going to hang out here for a minute. <laughs> well, yeah. Just, well. All right. You're gonna take that from him, Edward. Papa Leroy. Okay, so what you do, lay it down. Always hold it like this. Okay. And then you can lay it down like that. Never okay. hold it where the wire bends like this because you'll weaken it, although you're double wired, so you're gonna be stronger. Grassies, you always wanna lip them because they have spikes on the top, oh. on the gill plate, and it'll it'll mess you, you up. You are my dear. And when they, when they sting you, it stings for a long time. So you can hold it up. Oh just came out. You're lucky you got that one in. <laughs> you are so lucky. I gave it a little wiggle. Hey! So you want to... First one. First one. Thank you. So I always want to lip these like that. Okay. And they look, isn't that like a smallmouth bass kind of looking thing? Look like a creature from the Blue Lagoon. Feel that right there with your fingers. Oh yeah, that's super sharp. So, okay. First one. And I still have my bait. Now, oh, well, one of the target species. What are we after next? Eel. 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 Right. So that's a grassy. Yeah. I like to use the bags. If I'm going to keep the fish, I'll put it on a stringer if I'm working a lot of ledges. We do a lot of catch and release, but if you put it on a stringer, you can damage the gills and, and do some damage to the slime coat. These net bags have worked for us for years. We put the fish back and they, you know, we can keep them in the net bag. Just make sure the gill plates aren't cut so they can't caught in the net and then they can breathe. They're fine, I keep them in a deep pool. And if we wanna put some back, because it's been a really good day, and I, ha and I don't know how many he's caught, we'll put them a lot back. So, yeah, and it keeps them fresh. All right, I'm gonna try fishing right next to Mimi. Looks like she's working this same hole. Let's see if we can uh, get something good. Made this poke pole yesterday. Just drilled some really tiny holes, just big enough for the coat hanger to go through. Uh, crossed it over and then it came out and then I wrapped so that it's very, very sturdy. It's double wire, so it's just super, super sturdy. We'll see if that helps any. Oh, I'm already getting bit. Yep. Yep, oh, grabbed it off. And don't forget guys, if you're getting something out of this and you're enjoying this kind of content where you get to learn and see what we're doing, definitely drop a like. It lets us know that this is the kind of stuff that you enjoy. All right, so what's happening is on top of, I'm on top of this ledge and it goes deep under. And what I wanna do is I want this wire hugging the ceiling of that cavern and that way my bait just dangles right off the ceiling I'm already getting a bite got him oh he came right off perfect so that is a monkey face prickleback like Monica says they're not an actual eel got it Yep. <laughs> and holding them is almost impossible. These things could actually survive out, out of water for quite a long time. They are in that inner tidal zone, so sometimes they totally get dry, but that's why they're under these rocks. Little eyes, tiny eyes. Oh, let them, let them go. And sometimes you have to get it down a little bit lower. You can feel where the top and the bottom of the ledge is. Some of the fish like to hit it when it's higher up. Some like to hit it when it's lower down. And then if you're pocket fishing, all bets are off because they just come charging out of there. 
And if you hit something, see if you can feel it left or right. And then sometimes you have to come up and the hole will be up a little bit higher. Yeah. And then if you hit a wall, just got, you know you, there were, you had kind of a deeper hole to the right, but there'll be a ledge that's kind of angled as you come this way. It angles like this a little bit. Yeah. There you go. Sometimes just let it sit there and they'll find it. All right. We are going to catch fish here. Sometimes you're going to feel a big pop, and then remember, you lower your other hand, pull it out kind of horizontally, and then lift it up. If you think he's on there, kind of give it a little tug, and does he pull back? Okay, come this way. There you go! Woo Woo <laughs> All right, first eel. Woo! Oh! Good job. Two out of the three. Nice eel. Look at that. On sake. She just named my poke pole sake. The name is sake. Yep. yep. Mine is Charlotte. All right. It's not a true eel. It's a member of the prickleback family. Um, they are prolific up and down the California coastline. From here on up north, is they're super oh. prolific. Uh, they're a great eating fish. There's a lot of them, but you still always want to be conservative when you fish for anything. Because we can outfish these holes. We put a lot back. But they are great eating. Pure white meat. I never see any worms or anything else. Great eating. Really firm, super firm. It's great, like if you're doing a chipino or something, great for an adobo, just a great eating fish. But then my mom loves them in fish tacos. That's her favorite. So we're blessed to have a big population. Primarily kelp eaters, but then they'll eat everything that you offer them. And they really like mussel. All right. Thank you. Oh. That's, a, that's my oh, first Flossie! Alright, B! On Ooh. Charlotte! Woo! Nice one! Look at this! On Charlotte! So, before we take this off, just take a look around you. Just take a look around you. Look at this! It's Are crazy. we blessed? We're awesome. blessed. Awesome. So we did some amazing fishing today. It turned out pretty awesome. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little tutorial that Monica had helping Veronica catch her very first monkey face prickleback. And the first fish was actually a grassy, so that was pretty awesome. Hopefully you guys got some concepts on how to best pocket fish. And hopefully you guys get inspired to do this yourselves. Yeah guys, we're definitely blessed. We'll catch you guys on the next one.